Ricky, how's it going today? I am I am so excited, Billy. It's not even funny, man. Thanksgiving's right around the corner, Christmas, everything. A lot, lot of good things. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. There's a there's a lot to look forward to this season. Yeah. And one of the things which is really exciting is that your film, Hope for the Holidays, <laughs> is on Pure Flix. And so um, it's a film that's inspiring people. And I can't wait to talk to you about the ins and the outs of the movie and your career and just your passion for filmmaking. Yeah. But I guess I guess we'll start. Let's start with you. You know, usually I dive into okay. the movie first, but I want to know I want to know where your passion for filmmaking originated. So, okay, I'm 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 40 <laughs> something years old. So, by the time uh, I was 5 or 6, I just had a passion for wanting to be the center of attention. Like uh, family <laughs> gatherings, I wanted to tell jokes, I wanted people to laugh. I remember doing a dance routine to Rob Bass and DJ Z Rock. It takes two to make a thing go right on my grandfather's diving board at his pool, like on on Fourth of July. So I've just always wanted to entertain. And then uh, you know, fast forward, you go through life, you get married, you had kids. I I was in front of the camera a lot for some things, but um, I I just I, I got this overwhelming sense when I went to Bible college that God's primary way of speaking to us is through stories. The Bible is a story. It's a massive story. And storytelling for me is 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 just the top of the mountain, the top of the iceberg for, for reaching people. And so I was like, you know what? Acting is great, but as a writer, producer, director, I get to kind of be in charge of the whole thing. And, um, you know, when we boast in our talents and strengths, we're boasting in the Lord. I, I will say that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good director because that's how God created me to be. So my whole life has been wanting to make people happy, smile, full of joy. And, and now I get to do that uh, it, through film. So um, this film and my other film that's on Pure Flix as well, such just positive reviews, which fills my heart. But yeah, man, it just started at a very early age. And uh, I, I just want people to feel happy when they're talking to me and they're around me. All right. So you said, and that, by the way, that, that comes through the fact that you want people to be happy, the way you interact, just your personality, who you are. But I want to go back a little bit because you were like, Hey, I loved, you know, acting, being, being out there and let me do directing. But you mentioned this thing, Bible college in the middle of that. So like at what point, at what point did you, did you sort of go into the faith realm? Did you grow up as a Christian? Was there, I mean, going to Bible college is a serious thing. Yeah. So I grew up, I tell people I grew up Christian. I remember the date that I asked the Lord into my heart. I was April 8th, 1988. I was 10 years old, uh, almost 11. And uh, my mom raised us uh, to, to follow the Lord. So when I went to Bible college at 30 years old, I had all these dreams and desires to make movies and films, but I also felt that God called me to be a pastor. And my naivete at 30, uh, when I went to Bible college, I was like, okay, God, maybe I'll have one of those really cool churches that has a lot of people and will make really awesome videos. And that's how I'll quote unquote, you know, make movies. And so um, I, I tell everybody this, I have no, I am, I am not your like prototypical hammer nail guy. Like I like uh, soft drinks. I like nice clothes. So for me to go on a mission trip to Africa for a month was a big deal. And I did that while I was at Bible college. And so I'm in Africa. I'm in a village called Ujiji again, completely out of my element. Like where's the movie theater? Where's the bathroom? Like I need these things in my life. And I felt like God spoke clearly, like more clearly than I've ever felt him speak to me in my entire life. And he said, you see these things. And we were holding, these were before iPhones, but they were flip phones that could play videos. And all the people in the African village that were very poor and destitute had flip phones and they were watching American media on them. And I asked my translator, I said, what is the deal with that? And she said, whatever little money they do get, they prepay their cell phones so that they can continue to watch YouTube videos of American culture. And in that moment, I walked away for a minute and just had a moment with God. And I felt him say, these devices that I, oops, there goes my camera. I'm so sorry. Uh, These devices that I've created you can make content that's seen around the world. And Ricky, I've called you to be a filmmaker and you're going to reach the world through the films you make through these devices. Being a pastor just means loving people. It doesn't mean you need to be in a church working full time. And so I came back from Africa. I told my wife that I told my family that, and uh, everyone was like, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. So graduated college about a year later and went to work at a film production company. And, you know, we don't have time in this interview to talk about what that was, but that was a, that was a, 18 month boot camp of am I really going to trust God with the calling that he's put in my life or am I going to fall back on 
my worldly talents to earn money and provide and all those things, or am I going to trust God? And so very long story short, the Lord gave me a prophetic dream where my life would be at the end of my life if I followed him. And uh, I, I, I held on to that dream and, and never quit. And so finally, um, in 2019, I was able to direct my first film, Hope for the Holidays. Well, I mean, there's so, there's so much there to unpack. It's interesting to me that, you know, you're over in Africa, you're watching people on phones. And one of the things that I think is often troubling about American culture is that when it's not healthy, the elements of it that aren't healthy, exporting that other places, right? And yeah. so being a Christian and being able to make content, and there are plenty of Christians who make content that's not necessarily Christian content, but it's going to uplift, it's going to inspire, yeah. it's going to it's going to edify people. It's going to be content that if somebody opens a phone in Africa to watch it or anywhere in the world, it's not going to be negative. Yeah. And so here you are, you've moved into this realm. You're following what God called you to. What has been most surprising to you about that journey? Oh, man. Uh, again, I say this in all humbleness because when you follow the Lord, God isn't a God who teases so if he's given you a dream and a passion and a calling and you follow that, and I'm not saying in perfection, we, we're all flawed, but when you follow that sold out for him, sold out for what he's called you to do, he's, he's not going to give you crumbs. And so the funnest, if that's a word, thing about this whole journey has been from my first film to now, I've been able to work with actual talent that is recognizable from both Christians and non-Christians like who work in the film industry. I didn't have to start off on the student film kind of thing or the Sacramento film community where I'm cutting my teeth on films that'll never be seen that have no budgets. God put a film in front of me that had a million dollar budget and uh, I was able to work with people who were nominated for Oscars and won Golden Globes on my first film. And so that would be point A. Point B would be there's a huge difference. Uh, I've been told now on the on the two films I've worked on set, there's a huge difference on the sets that are um, run and operated by people who love the Lord and sets who are not. And so I've had quite a few actors and actresses and crew members come up to me and say, what's the difference? Why does this set feel like a, one of them said a warm bath? Why does this set feel like a warm bath? And I said, I think it's because most of the people here on the set love the Lord. And because we want to put all of you before ourselves and treat you great, not on a pedestal, but, you know, the serving nature of Jesus on a film set. And I am happy to say that on the two films I've worked on, I can count at least eight people who have come to know the Lord after the film set is closed down because they're like, well, OK, if this is who Jesus really is and it's not who the media is saying he is, I want to know more about him. And so that's been the most fun part of it. That's people living out their faith authentically in in a workplace that can be very stressful. You know, it can be very fun, <laughs> okay. but it, it can be really stressful making a movie. And so being able to live that out, you've actually had people come to know the Lord as a result of just working and watching people yeah. live their Christianity yeah. out. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, I, I know I probably right off the top of my head, I can name five of them. And uh, it's it, it's 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 really cool. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. It's really cool to see someone who thinks they're going to work on a film and it's just going to be the same thing. And then they, they walk away with eternity and that there is no price you can put on that. Obviously we know that. So um, I'm going to keep doing this till I have my last breath in my body. I'll be 88 years old directing films by the grace of God. That's amazing. Well, well let's talk about a film you directed hope for the holidays. Now yeah. this is about a man who his love for his mom kind of leads him to make one of the biggest mistakes, if not the biggest mistake of his life. And I don't want to yes. give it all away right. for those who haven't seen it. Yeah. But where did the where did the inspiration for this movie come from? So George Christie, believe it or not, is the former leader of the Hells Angels. And this short story came from his prison time. It's not autobiographical, but it is autobiographically inspired, I would say. So he got out of prison. He had this short story. He gave it to his manager who ended up being the producer of the film. And um, so uh, how do I tell this story very shortly? Um, I was going to do another film before Hope for the Holidays. I had got $30,000 raised by myself and my friends and family to uh, finance 10% of the film's budget through an investor that we vetted and, you know, all the things. And he took that $30,000 and, and left and went by and we will never hear from him again. So... In that, I decided that based on everything I was told my whole life growing up and through my mentors and things, I'm the CEO of the Respond Well department in my life. So I chose, yes, he took my money and my friends and family money, but I responded well to that and it meant something to the Hollywood producer that was on that film. So about 12 months after the guy took our $30,000, he called, he's like, look, I don't get it. 
your attitude has been, and I'm not praising myself at all whatsoever. I'm not. I'm just saying that this is what can happen when you when you're obedient. He said, "I don't get it. You had every right to cuss that guy out, to fly to Australia, to find him, and all those things." And I, he's like, "We, my partner and I, don't understand why you responded so well. We have this film called Hope for the Holidays that we think you'd be good for if you can find the financing for. We'd be happy to have you direct it." And uh, and so uh, it. it it happened. Uh, I found a financer and uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this story, but I'll tell you this. So I got the script in May of 2017. And like you said, it's about a son in his forties, his mom in her sixties. Uh, she gets cancer and he robs a bank to uh, pay for her bills, gets caught and goes to prison. I read the script in May of 2017 and I liked the script a lot. It, it, I didn't love it though. Well, in July of 2017, my mom calls me and she's, and I'm really, I mean, as close to a, a mother as any son has ever been. She said, uh, I have stage four metastatic liver cancer and she was dead six weeks later. So wow. I took what my mom told me during her six weeks journey of diagnosis to, to going home. And I rewrote the entire character that Sally Kirkland plays in the film named Georgia. I rewrote that entire character to say 95% of what my mom told me in real life, including my mom's last words on earth are the last words Sally speaks in the film. And so uh, Genesis 50, 20, uh, what the devil intends for harm, God will use for good. I, I don't love that my mom is gone, but I love the fact that I was able to write a character in a film that has been seen by people and they like the film that emulates kind of who my mother is. And so uh, that's the very short version of, of Hope for the Holidays and how it came to be. That is one of the most personal projects ever imaginable. I mean, yeah. I can't, you know, being able to, I would imagine that was a very difficult emotional experience for you at the same time as you were describing it, a really rewarding experience to yeah. be able to solidify that legacy of who your mother is for audiences. What, I mean, that kind of changes the whole dynamic yeah. of the film. If somebody's watching this or listening to this right now, hearing that and then going into the movie, knowing that information what is it that you want people to take away from the film in light of all of that? I think the first thing would be that God absolutely hears the cries of your heart. And the cries of my heart were I wanted to tell stories that, la that leave legacies. And so God chose to use my mother's illness and death in a way that I hope when people watch this film gives them hope. Because my hope for the fact that my mother's in heaven right now with Jesus and Johnny Cash – is translated in the film and in the main character, Danny, and how he interacts with his mom. And some of the things Danny says to his mom in the film are things I said to my mom. But um, that would be the first thing is that when, when this film is over and the credits are rolling, I want people to have hope. I know it's silly. The title of the film is Hope for the Holidays, which wasn't the original title, by the way. But I want people to walk away with hope for whatever situation they're in, that God hears your prayers. And I love telling people this. There are horrible things going on in the world but there's also things in your life that on a scale of the world's problems might be a two out of 10 or a one out of 10, but they're still your problems and God cares. And if you give them to him, he will listen and answer your prayers. And so that's the biggest takeaway for me. Um, and then I hope it's just a fun film. I hope when people look at it, they, 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 they see that the film doesn't feel, smell, look, act like your traditional faith-based films. Um, I made this film for people who love movies because that's who I am. You can see all the Star Wars stuff behind me. I'm a you guy that an loves – You've yeah. got an awful lot of stuff going on, but I love it. Yeah. So I, I, I want people to walk away saying this was a good film, not this was a good faith-based film because then you're automatically putting it in a category. I just want it to be a good film, and, and so far so good. People have really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, people are loving it. The audience has really been inspired by it, and you can see that in the reviews and the way that people – you know, talk about it was, so here's, here's a question for you. And it's one of our last questions and it's sure. an important one. You know, this is obviously there are some Christmas themes in this. The word holiday is there. Yeah. This is something that um, really can be watched this time of year. Now there's also some heavy subject matter, obviously, yeah. but why is this a movie that this time of year is a good film mm -hmm. for people to sit down and watch? When you when you think about the holiday season, you know they, I think it's from Thanksgiving to Christmas, or maybe Halloween for all of you who love Halloween to Christmas. Especially now during a pandemic where we're social distancing and, and we're not getting as much interaction with people as we normally do, you can feel lonely. You can feel like you're on an island. You can feel perhaps even like God's not listening or God's not there. Or where where are my friends? Where are my family? And so I think the importance of a film like this that takes place during the holidays 
it meshes the story of about three, I won't call them main, but three characters, the main character and two side characters, and we're interweaving. But it all comes together. And that's that's the story of humanity. You know, when you look at the Bible, the meta ver version of the Bible is Jesus Christ. He's woven through every chapter and every verse. And so when you watch this film, it's a film about coming together and rallying around a person. But in, but in that, everyone else has their own struggles they're dealing with. And God also hears those prayers as well. For me, when people ask me, what word would you use to describe this film? I would say authentic. And so when people are watching this film during the holidays, I hope they come away feeling like, this was authentic and it spoke to my heart and I don't feel as hopeless or alone as maybe I did before the film started. Well, listen, Ricky, I am so excited about this film. It's hope for the holidays. If you're watching this right now or listening to this, yeah. go over to pure flicks, watch the movie. And Ricky, thanks for sharing your story. It's, it's an incredible story. And I love, I love just how, you know, exuberant and excited you are just as a person and just about your craft. It's really an amazing thing to see. Well, thank you, Billy. This, this was an honor. I am touched. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film. Anybody who's listening or watching and uh, yeah, my leave a, leave a review for it. I, I love reading the reviews. So yeah, thanks again, my friend. Thank you. We'll, we'll have you back sometime very soon. All right. All right.